ahead and uh, call this meeting to order on March 12th uh, at 6.35 p.m. And welcome to everyone. Thank you for being here. And um, it does not appear that we have any members of the public here. So we will uh, go ahead and approve or review the minutes. And if there are any changes, anything, if not, I will entertain a motion. Motion that the minutes be approved as read. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Thank you all. And minutes approved as written. And um, we will move on in the agenda here. Uh, since there's no public comment, uh, any new business? How many people does it take to have a quorum? A quorum is the majority. Uh, oh, uh, so there are seven of us. Isn't there, isn't there seven total with one vacancy currently? With one vacancy. And so we're right out. So we're really just missing two right now. Right. Yeah. So we're so at, we have a quorum. We have a quorum. So. Sandra, should I, should I for new business, does that just what's that? What, on the people's minds or what's um which for saying what's on your mind? Yeah, sure. Or should I go from later? Um yeah, you are welcome. I know I'm not I, I it's sort of weird because I'm not really part of the committee, oh, but I'm supposed to be you, know, <laughs> you are part of the committee. Maybe it's I am, I don't know. Especially if it's new, we want to show Yeah, that. yeah. If it's new stuff, it's here. Well, and, and it was just and something we're not Super formal. So go for it. Uh, sometimes you would. Um, so uh, just a couple things. Well, I think we talked about last time Holly Street, Northern Territorial, how that's a little bit disjointed as far as walking goes. And I've always wondered why there's no plans for actually making connected sidewalks in Canby. Seems like every builder kind of puts a sidewalk up, but then you have a sidewalk and not a sidewalk. So any new building has to put in sidewalk, but the other ones are kind of grandfathered in. So That's if, according to the plan approved by the city. But I know it's even the new development, you'll have a sidewalk. Yes. And then not a sidewalk. Because, exactly. Because there's nothing done. It's not developed. Yeah, yeah I, I think it would be a little or, make, make it maybe make a little more sense to uh have the city build the sidewalk and then build the build the builders back when they come in to reimburse them on you know so what that way says it's a nice continuous sidewalk well, so that way people could um could uh continue to walk yeah i mean <laughs> just just as a you know that way so some say maybe the city can build the sidewalk and then i know the belt uh, the developers pay for it still when this when they as part of the, the arrangement and i know sometimes people do it that way they put a in other cities, they'll put a, you know, the, the city will, or you make a little improvement district or whatever that they do where, where everybody's got to. And Dan. that's a good point. I'm just letting you know that we did write uh, into the TSP last time it was updated uh, about a little over 10 years ago to um, include those limited improvement districts. Um, that are available, but everyone on the block has to agree to it, correct? I believe um, so. I don't know the exact policy, but it's probably at least the majority, and that is not city funded. That's coming out of the, you know, that's the neighbors agreeing that we are paying out of our pockets collectively to make that improvement cost. Well, I'm saying happen. when there's a new development coming in, you should have something like sidewalks go up first, and then they can recover they their feet. Well, where I'm built right now, that sidewalks are not continuous. And I just got a new house. 
you know. It's but do you have a sidewalk in front of your house? Yes, but it's not linked up to all the other sidewalks. My understanding is that yes, in like a primarily single family development, as you know, they're from what I've seen, what I review, you know, it's not like, okay, we have these streets, you know, we start on street one, two, three, it's kind of like, we'll do this lot, this lot, this lot. And it's one lot at a time, which yes, I think. Which the improvements are only done on single family, typically, at least sidewalk improvements are only generally done. One well, I know that's the way it's done, because I've seen it. I know yeah. I know how it's done. Yeah. We're talking about how it should be done. Exactly. <laughs> which is maybe a different, right, right. Which is a different and question. You're in the... And you've been, can be resident for how long? Uh, it's been, what, about 13 years? Okay. Yeah. So if you go back, it can be with much, much smaller than it is now. The city council felt that they didn't want, they wanted encouraging growth. And they thought by insisting on sidewalks that it would make it more expensive for builders. And so they were, weren't requiring sidewalks. When was this? And Which is true, it is less. Okay. Like 1960s. No yeah, and it's, they do cost what I'm, money. So what I'm trying to say is the old neighborhoods don't have sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And really, what you're talking about are orphan sidewalks. You got a nice new section, and they got sidewalks. And they get into the older parts of town, or older neighborhoods that connect to those new urbans, and there's no sidewalks. And, and how do we get the city council to start filling in the infrastructure to make make them connect at least on the major streets. I mean, you take Holly or you take Ivy uh, on this side, and and I don't know the streets that well on the other side, but there's a lot to be done. Oh, yeah. I know. I like I, I like to yeah. walk around. You may see me walking around a lot, but I know that going certain streets, you go to a, a one side versus the other side, and you cross over the sidewalks. And I it'd be nice to have some sort of plan to say, you know, we need sidewalks and then whatever has to be done to do it. I mean, you know, I, I know it's not free and it's going to be something that, that um, I'm just wondering if, if there's a, if I can, we can maybe, I don't know if you guys want to talk about and put on an agenda to say. Of course we can. <laughs> we, 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 we have talked about gaps that we want to fill. So we're not going to argue against what you're saying. I'm just sure you're, you're, you're preaching you're, to the choir. Yeah. I mean, having the city just come in and say, update the code to say now everybody's got to have a sidewalk. Well, you have more to say with that than us. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm saying I might, I, yeah. but I wanted, I don't know if it's been discussed. And I'm just well, coming there in might the be some people who like just walking back and forth 25 feet and turning around <laughs> to stay on that so, sidewalk. Like that, but you're walking around cars. And, and, and the other issue is, is I think these newer developments, the streets are not wide enough. Because like even going down Maple, when when we, you can't is when cars are parked on the side of the road, mm -hmm. you uh, driving it's 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 one lane. It's not two lanes. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if if that's been addressed before. The idea that that the streets are not oh, wide enough for two on lanes. Maple. Oh, well, going no, down Maple, the very all, far all, north. All the new streets and all the developments are not. They're only one lane if cars are parked on the side of the road. If their cars are not parked, it's two lanes. You can pass, but you can't pass cars going forward if there's um you have to go mm -hmm. do the whole jockey for position. I mean, I don't know if that's a bike and safety committee thing or not, but it's probably the whole but sidewalk. But it was approved incentive. by the city to do that. Of course, it was. <laughs> so. I will so. just mention that there is a benefit to slowing down cars for bike and pedestrians. I know that there's a lot of conflict. If you're say riding in the street, but if you're a pedestrian and you're a car that has to, you know, go down Maple and has no need to stop, there's whatever, you know, I don't know personally, but let's say there's no stop signs for three blocks, someone could easily be going 60 miles per hour down a residential road. Well, that's true, and that's so. doubly a problem if there's no sidewalks on the side. You yeah. know, if there are sidewalks that mitigates the problem somewhat. So, not completely. Typically, on, um, you know, let's take Redwood, for example. I have another example. Yeah. Oh. Territorial yeah. And, and and Holly. Uh, well, let's use Redwood just kind of to start with in that. So where we have a new development, they put in the sidewalk, right? And then you have the existing homes, the old time homes that have no sidewalk in front of them. So is this, are you following? Oh yeah, why not? Okay, I know, okay. I so, so yeah. Areas. And 
as it is now, it's these sidewalks are owned by the homeowner, correct? It's not owned by the city. Yes. And so it's owned by the city, but maintained by the property. what's that? The city owns the right of way, but it's maintained by the, the, the yeah. owner. The I have owner a sidewalk in front of my house. I understand I own that, but if I wanted to take a jackhammer and um, and turn it into a, uh, you'd have some. Well, I just I disagree. To grab, well, you can't. Well, the, yeah. yeah, I disagree that the city owns the sidewalk. The right, it's in right of yeah. way, which right of way is technically under city ownership, but so, it is your responsibility as the property owner adjacent to that sidewalk to maintain it, or even to pay for having it put in if you're already the property owner correct so let's say i am living in a house where i me and my neighbor are both saying we don't have sidewalks but you know i'm getting older and i'm gonna have grandkids around and i might have a walker and i want to be sure that we can walk and and for my neighbor down here let's get this in there we can't go to the city and say put in my sidewalk well we could yes you can but you can but then you're basically paying for it within your taxes and there's really no point in putting that. a sidewalk that right? if either side doesn't have one sidewalks i think need to be continuous otherwise there's no what's the point i agree and the term is orphan sidewalk that's the like term that. So orph orphans, and so I'm thinking about uh, maybe bringing that to city council and see, because I think a well-planned city should have continuous sidewalks, and maybe th with you know put an assessment on the houses that don't have them, and they make it make it so it's reasonable, so so they don't pay it all at once, you know, or you know that kind of thing, and or they pay it when they sell. City it. Canby doesn't do that. I know, but I know other cities do it. I yeah. do, but say, Canby doesn't. But, but yeah. just because they it. haven't we doesn't got mean they can't. That, that it, they might yeah. do they it. They might. Yet. Haven't I mean, done it yet. That they haven't done it. can be encouraging. Not, not it, Canby good. has been willing to put in sidewalks a lot of places where the property owners don't want them. Right. Anyway, something to bring up. Um, if you're in the city, if you're out in the country, you don't have sidewalks. If you're in the city, you do. That's kind of thing. Do you think that would be an issue? Is a lot of property owners not? Going well, the city has wanted to put sidewalks it? down tents, you know. Hmm. So that was a barrier. The property owners. Then. And, there, and there's currently a plan. Yes. They're going to put sidewalks on Ivy as part of this improvement that's going to go in soon. Because one of the problems yeah. there is that Let's the right of way isn't isn't wide enough. And so the property owners would have to agree to sell part of their property to the city in order to put in a sidewalk. That's at the uh, east end of 10th, close to uh, uh, where you are. And, and uh, no, I, I was talking east. Yeah. Where I am, there's enough right away to put yeah. in a sidewalk. You guys have a wide Yeah, the road east there. end, yeah. And that's, that's fun walking down 10th. I do that. I, I avoid it. Um, but, well, it's fun, like I say. It's, <laughs> I, <laughs> But uh, yes, it's exciting. Uh, well, it's, yeah, but yeah. Like walking down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, what can we would let? I mean, we appreciate that you are, going, you know, an advocate for this. I I believe as a committee, and what can we do to back you up? And when you do go before council to say, hey. Why don't we do this? Um, we'd like to be able to be there and back you up, I think. Is that the feeling? Well, of, the, the idea is it time is, to be changing the code? Well, it, it may be or may not, but if you did something like this was to get done, at least the way I think it would actually do it to actually have it happen. If I bring it to the city council, they'll say, yeah, that's a good thing to talk about later. Um, and, 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 they, and they will do it that way, but I think, um, somehow maybe i need to talk with start talking with eileen or people in your department yes. to 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 say can we develop something that would work and present to the city council because remember us city councilors we're volunteers and hate to be to, to to talk bad about myself but we don't know what we're doing really um yeah. and um the uh, and half the time we're just arguing with each other about silly things but jerry, jerry nelson has a list of sidewalk projects Mm -hmm. And pr prior toys, you know. Yeah. So, but I think, but, but there's the individual projects. But there's the idea of can we create 
a city with continuous sidewalks and then if if and then find ways i mean you know it's 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 going to be a lot of details and a lot of um issues about how to purchase the right away do we use eminent domain other ways of doing it to do that then there's a lot of details that go on it but those those details are really beyond the ability of the city council to plan on it so it has to have a plan develop but we can push it and cheerlead and say let's put some pressure to to make that happen because obviously jerry and the they're the ones that are going to do the work, you know. And so, I mean, I can get my shovel out, and, but I don't think he would like so, the sidewalk that I built. If you give money to Jerry and Alzine, I'm sure he'll put in those sidewalks. Because <laughs> we're going to do budget in, in a little bit. We're going to start formulating the budget, and that's where those kind of things. And are come into place. I think one of the places to start on that is a conversation with Jerry, Jerry and Alzine and Eileen. I would say Eileen, because okay. if you're going from a policy perspective, there's kind of two prongs of this is, you know, are we talking about funding this with city dollars? Or are we talking about funding this through, you know, some form of getting more money from property owners? Um, and it's, it wouldn't necessarily, I mean, I think planning is involved, but to change the code does just to change the development code, which is what planning manages doesn't address the issue because that's what we're doing right now of the, the development code doesn't come into play until you do development but from what i'm hearing it sounds like this is more like this person on redwood is a you know is a has an orphan or has an area without a sidewalk they've owned this house since the 70s and nothing's planned to change for this lot that's kind of those lots that we yes want to do those are really the gaps so that this. Places, yes okay. and then what about the barrier though of it being a needing to, can, to take to, to use connect. the land of the homeowners. Oh, well, I mean, that's what well, so it depends. Said. Some streets may in the in the instance that Cliff was talking about on tenth, right? There's the right of way is not there. I truthfully don't know, but I believe you could say there's some instances where the right of way has been is is already um, kind of counted for. Like it's there. So it's just like an easement type. No, just like yeah. if you look at some tax lots, like some people think their property starts at this curb, but really the no. the right of way starts like ten feet back. Something like that. Yeah. Um, oh, so so it, it appears to the you know if you're never looking at a tax map, you have no idea. It appears they just have. So they've been allowed. planned for, is what um, you're saying. No. I think some there was sometimes <laughs> there were they were maybe like what Cliff was talking about. It seems like there was intention to accommodate for it in the future, way back when. Mm -hmm. Like if you look. Um, like kind of the east of down or sorry west of downtown a little bit there's a lot of that like it seemed like the idea was th there that we should one day we want this but we're not going to have it right now so there's I think I'm just kind of going off of me poking around on maps every now and then there's some areas I mean, where the right I asked Matilda that so. about a sidewalk in front of my house yeah and said well get everybody on your block to to agree to, yeah, agree to have a sidewalk to do an LID and she didn't say but, about that. but if you have an if you have an uh, if you have a unanim unanimity requirement, then you're never going to get anything done because there's always going to be one person that's going to say I don't want to do it. Right. Exactly. I, I think it's a my understanding of LIDs is typically it's a majority, but that's just my okay. recollection. So we would have to double check the TSP and what our policy is in the code. I don't yeah. know off the top of my head, but I can certainly look into that. And so if you look at the TSP, you're going to see where all the sidewalks are planned and then um jerry has a list of priority gaps that we're going to be filling and in what order they're taking those on um so to know what's in the you know in the bin coming on the conveyor belt coming through is going to be helpful before you you, you know we broach some of this but then really knowing how strong our LID and all is, that's going to be kind of one of our next uh, things to bring. Because I'm going to, I mean, I I'll, obviously I'll bring it up next council meeting, and the and obviously I can, but the question is, what is anything going to happen after I bring it up? And uh -huh. the the. I hate to say that, the, but the city government structure that we have here is. The city government does the council approves every once in a while we say no or tweak it but that's really how it, how how it works i mean maybe that's that, that's just how it works a city manager formal government we don't really do a lot of 
get into the weeds and we can't really, I don't have the time, I'm not an expert at that. But I think if I bring it up, I wanna start pushing to say, we need a plan. And I think we need to have, we need to put those sidewalks in, even if it's, if it's pay now, bill later, because if you have an assessment against the property owners, they're not gonna like it and they don't necessarily have to pay it, but if you put a lien on the, on it, it's, it's gonna be paid eventually whether we either when, when they sell it or when exactly. they go probates or whatever happens, transfers the property. So that's one of the advantage of, I'm a tax guy, but the one advantage of property tax has over income, income tax is a terrible way of collecting taxes. Property tax is a good way. And the reason why, because the property never moves, whereas the person who pays income tax, they move around a lot. But the, um, but the, that's, that's beside the point. But, the, what I think, but I think if I bring up this, the orphan side, sidewalk issue, and start, but maybe as a, as a as a as a pedestrian committee, you can ask formally ask the city to to explore, and I guess that's the first step. You know, explore options for connecting the so, sidewalks before the property owner decides that they wake up one day and say, "I want a sidewalk on my property," which is going to be never. Right. So another way to phrase this is we need to have our active trans, transportation plan be pushing for more sidewalks and prioritize where they need to be done before the developer or the property owner wants them to. So that's what's going to have to happen. Currently, the development. You're is talking about make, a policy change or a code change, something change. technically, something basically a stronger code to be able to implement things because Right now, we have it in the plans to cover these gaps when we make improvements to the road and when the property owner agrees mm -hmm. and all that. So we need a, where we're at, I think. The code needs to be changed. So when we don't have to wait till if the property is already improved yeah. and there's no sidewalk, it, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. We need and, to address and, that problem. Yeah, and just like, yeah, out there well, we at Territorial talk, and Holly, where- We can um, talk about Locust Street project mm -hmm. between 4th and 10th. And that yeah. was city funded, Clint, yeah. do you know, right? That yeah. was all city done, and city construct, like public yeah. works constructed it too, right? So that yeah. was kind of all internal. In a sense. Are, That's a nice street. Mm -hmm. and, and like I say, I walked down mm -hmm. that street as well. And they, um, they city bent over backwards to the property owners to put that in because they actually put the sidewalk in the former street so they didn't take any of their property. So, so oh, really? Oh yeah. Jeez. So I think if we, we want to put that on an agenda the, and then formally ask. There's certain places where there's an old curb. The curb was on the back of the sidewalk. Really? Mm -hmm. You know what? You got my hands off to Jerry Nelzine to figure that out. Well, he said that the property owners didn't have enough room for their for their driveways and parking their cars and stuff like that. And I go, okay, your city's being really generous. And yeah. I, you guys, we were kind of talking over. Oh, no, that's fine. I don't mind being talking. <laughs> um, so don't, so I'm not, I'm not personally in yeah. it, but so that was, so that's something I think I, I would suggest that you guys, because I'm not really officially part of the committee. I'm just giving, giving yeah. thing and then the other thing you're which, a liaison so you're you're a key part of this committee yeah. you're not a voting member but you're yeah. you're our connection on getting things done so yeah. so so that's one thing and the other thing i just want that's completely unrelated but i'm a i'm a pedestrian i walk around a lot and i've been walking a lot lots plus pretty i like to walk whenever the weather's nice i'd rather walk than drive um i probably should bike start biking but i don't know what place to store my bike if i go to work but the thing is one thing that I've lived in other countries with bikes all over the place, but one thing that always a little bit concerning sometimes is sharing the sidewalks with the bikes. And I don't know, it's, I currently I don't think the city has prohibits bikes from the sidewalks, but I know that sometimes getting run over by a bike is, uh, or almost getting run over by a bike. We, be, we've, we've talked about European cities that have separate pedestrians, bikes. I know when I was biking in Italy, if I went on the sidewalk on the bike, that that's a no-no. That's a no-no. They don't do that. No. And you don't walk in a, in a bike path either. Yeah. I don't know. I was just, yeah. but I've always wondered why they, why in Canby they don't, they allow 
bikes on the sidewalk. I don't know if it's a... Does that happen a lot? Not too often, but it does happen sometimes where you're sitting there and you're... And then the main thing I think it, it confuses people is when you, the bikes are in the uh, crosswalks where you're... Where you're... Are you a pedestrian or are you a... I'm a pedestrian. Vehicle. Well, I, well, I'm a vehicle sometimes, but... No, no, no. I'm <laughs> saying you're referring yeah, I mean, to the, the bicyclist. Is the bike a pedestrian? As, or... saying, is the bicyclist acting as a pedestrian? Are they walking the bike or yeah, are they riding the, the bike? Or are they do you can be most of the riding the bike across the in intersection. In the traffic lane. Because, yeah. and so what happens if you're in the, uh, if you're walking across the bikes, you know, kind of edging you out of the, the, the pedestrian lane almost. Hmm. Did you want to speak to that? I was, that's the oh. authentic issue. I was yeah. going to simply say, most of the bikes I see ridden on the sidewalk are by kids. That's yes. true. And you know what? I want the kids at the sidewalk. I do too. I don't want them in the road. Mm -hmm. And the biggest trouble is when they're going fast enough and they get to a, where there's a crosswalk, they go right across. And, you know, they kind of forgot that lesson of being a kid of stopping, looking both ways before proceeding. And true, they have that right away. It's, but, but it's dangerous. Yeah, it's a dangerous thing. Yeah. And also, you have this kind of nebulous area that, you know, maybe a public awareness campaign mm -hmm. here in town. Um, you know, at what point are the kids, you know, you have this kid that's He's on the bike. He's got he's his earphones usually, on. He can't. He doesn't know anything's yeah, going well, on. Well, but also he's kind of just transitioning from grade school to junior high, and he used to just ride on the sidewalk. Now he's in junior high and a lot stronger and riding on the sidewalk when he probably shouldn't. And so, you know. So you're using there should be an age limit to ride on the sidewalk, no. or or a speed. I mean, yeah, maybe an age limit. Maybe well, I think I think you're limit. right about the public Basically, awareness. Basically, if you're doing education. a walking pace, okay. if you're doing a walking pace on a bike, or parents with children on bikes, you know, something like that. The problem right. as a pedestrian is usually the teenagers. Those are the ones that are strong enough and big enough to go fast, but not mm -hmm. smart enough to go. I think we down. should. I think we need to be very careful <laughs> not to police it too much and discourage kids from riding their yeah. bikes and you know i think we need to just be really careful about that because we don't want to make it too complicated and discourage discourage yeah. any of that I guess. and it also depends are we talking is there in this road sidewalk next to the road is there a bike lane or not is it how wide is exactly. it these narrow streets where where yeah. it's really yeah. really one lane of traffic can get through it's, it's yeah, so, i don't know uh, the answer to the question but i think a, I think it may be some public awareness discussion and also included in there that pedestrians don't belong on the railroad tracks after what happened last week. That was a pedestrian, as far as I know, I talked to the police chief about that. That was a pedestrian using the railroad track as a as a pathway. And that, of course, there seems to be some sort of education. Well, so it wasn't crossing the... No, it wasn't at a, it was not at an intersection. They were on the um, the rails, walk apparently walking to work. Your head, earbuds mm -hmm. on hit from behind um and um i was obviously that's all we'll ever know and, about and it not a, not a suicide as far as i know not suicide because he's on his way to work and i mean i mean we'll never know for sure because yeah. he's not there to ask or answer questions but the um but as far as they, they tell it it's an accident and he was walking to work on the on the railroad tracks and i think if we had an education in school about pedestrian safety, bike safety, all that. And maybe had them, have them redo it once a year or something just so they remember but it. Sometimes well, you can't teach people common sense. That's true. <laughs> but at the same time, um, there's uh, the Safe Routes to School program that um, uh, we've tried to encourage. We've kind of lost our school liaison person, but uh, that was very helpful when we actually had um, you know, if you can have either an active parent or teacher or someone from the school district, uh, you really kind of have to have that person that's part of the school to um, help implement these safe route to school things. They do have some public campaigns on that. Um, 
and we have the uh, bike rodeo that the uh, pol uh, police department uh, puts on every year, which has been great. But yeah, it's a continuing effort. Yeah, educates all because by the time you educate the current students, yeah, the new old crops come in and yeah. Kind of um, the other thing that I think is a timely uh, topic is that uh, I just saw that they are really looking at classes of bike, uh, motorized or, mm -hmm. you know, pedal assist maybe, maybe, bikes. Maybe a point in order here. We're almost to have our decision. Sorry. And we're yeah. on new business. And we're just I going stand, I, I know I made a request <laughs> for two subjects under new business, and one was the uh, train pedestrian accident, which we've covered okay. when we've got other stuff, we'd probably fall back to it. Emma, I sent you, you don't remember what the other one was? Because I don't. I didn't get an email. I thought I sent you an email with that. I, I have a response. I didn't see something. And I can't think of it, so it isn't important, Sorry. but still I'm worried about the time and, and that yes. we, mm -hmm. and so I, I'm yeah. going to say, oh, Mindy, back so, to you what you want to do your chair. some of this will actually. Looks good. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I point taken there. And uh, if we can move on to uh, onto our annual goal setting, we're not all here, but I need to take a break. Do, we okay. could do sidewalk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as the main goal. No, I think we really did talk about that. And I think yeah. that is a yeah. new point for us to look at mm -hmm. is under goal setting is mm -hmm. uh, sidewalk connectivity mm -hmm. and maybe leave it at that in in, uh, in the TSP. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that would be a great goal. Um, I have another one uh, and that is um, bike lane par parking and bike lanes. I, I was going to bring it up later, but I would simply uh, put that in there and then I'll come back on this, uh, the county report and talk about that. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that there. Can I make a quick comment in regards, um, Bruce, to what you said about street connectivity and the TSP? Um, I know I sound a little bit like a broken record with the TSP, but so one of the things that the, T the current TSP probably has and will get, you know, amended and updated in this current TSP is you have your project list and then that project, you know, so we say, you know, we think we need you know, fill in the sidewalks on Redwood, we need a new road here, we need these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that gets put into a list. But then there's a financially constrained list, which is like, here's what we know we have funding for realistically in the next 20 years. That's what's on the financially constrained. And then here is, you know, kind of those other projects that we still think are important, but we don't really think that we will have funding for. But they're here if that funding comes to be, if we can find grant funding. And so I think it's somewhat separate to this kind of approach that we're talking about of, um, you know, kind of talking about policy change. But I think in addition to that kind of prepping this committee to make um, kind of make the case and advocate for, you know, we think what, you know, I'm just kind of throwing out example. Let's say we think there's five roads in town that really have these disjointed sidewalks that we really want to focus on and we really want to advocate that those get you know on the on the funded list in a sense mm -hmm. in a TSP and so kind mm -hmm. of I think it along with this kind of policy change it could be a lot of value to start you know as a group thinking about you know what criteria do we you know not to say um that you all have to like write this big report and do a lot of analysis. Yeah, Because right. <laughs> I know you guys have all the time as volunteers, but you know, like how can you, as people who are out there on the ground all the time, you know, what what do you see as priorities and why and how, you know, kind of for us to get that documented, I think would, would go very far mm -hmm. and that you can kind of stand behind that as those discussions really start to happen, which Mm -hmm. Truthfully, I don't know when they'll happen. It could be in six months. It could be more than that. I don't know. Well, I mean, we are updating our TSP. So yes, I just don't know what the, you know. Yeah, yeah what's the time yeah. doing that? Oh. So no, I usually tell them no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so something else for you all to consider regarding sidewalks is as a kind of another pathway mm -hmm. um, to kind of advocate for more sidewalks. It's just something for you to consider. Absolutely. Right. And what was that? Um, f advocating for certain projects in the TSP financially constrained list, basically kind of 
the funded list in a sense. And it sounds like getting as specific as we can. Yeah, yeah, you know, we think 10th, even though this is kind of a product that's already been in discussion, but you know, we think 10th through Redwood to, I can't think of a Western street, needs, you know, needs improvements. Well, 10th ten, is in planning for a, yes, re, a reworking of that at the moment. Mm -hmm. So and, is, and something's going to happen to 10th. I'm not sure what, but yeah. And so uh, historically, yes, uh, <laughs> a lot of things just like on 10th, on different ones that we've advocated for on IV, things like that. Sometimes, you know, it's a snail's pace. But we, I have to say, Jerry Nelson has been pretty responsive to um, making sure that when we have a sidewalk gap concern or real improvement area, he, um, he's been responsive to help getting it going and on the list. And mm -hmm. he really has. Yeah. So, um, and 10th, he was kind of like going, I didn't realize that was quite such a thing. And we got it, he, he went well, to the, bat. The block in front of my house is not on the list. It's, it's not? No, no, it is. Still not? Oh. Well, it wasn't at that time. Oh, not at that time, no. And I haven't seen any, any change. Is it? Okay. I thought that was on the, it's in the, the did you just say it's coming up? They're redoing the whole 10th and the Pine um, area, and we just, I think. From where to where, do you know? And that's where I, where I was. Jerry had it split up into three projects between Ivy and Pine. Okay. All right. And one of them Ivy's, just got. Ivy and Pine. Pine. And, okay. And, and Ivy is. Between Ivy and. Yeah, yeah. Not, not Further to, east, not Yeah, I, want, not I wanted Holly. it to Holly. Yeah. And. No, we're, that, we're, we're, we're talking about. So. Pine, pine, I think, and I and I have to look it up. I could be wrong, but I think it was like between Maple and Pine, is what is where the this is where the current project's going. But but don't don't call that me. Sounds that sounds about right. Okay, we are getting down okay. into the weeds, more and than then they're in important weeds. But we're looking at yeah. annual goal setting. Annual goal setting. And I think we need to take broad right Thank now, you. not narrow. Did you want so. to discuss that now, or you wanted to have? more members at the meeting before we discuss goals or we can't, uh, or we can't put it off. Let's do some basic goal setting and then we'll kind of vote on it next time. But sidewalks. Um, sidewalk and, connectivity. Uh, I have that written down. Right. Sidewalk connectivity. In the past, we've said sidewalk mm -hmm. gap, but gaps, but uh, sidewalks. Connectivity is fine. And then focus on TSP financially constrained list, prioritize that might be a, uh, within that might be helpful for um, advoc advocacy. So that is, we usually do kind of three main uh, annual goals and is there a second? Well, traditionally, one? The, developing the diverso project is one of the top goals we've always had. This is true. I think I would say if we we do it and we call it. Let's do um, the logging road maintenance and an expansion. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. that way, if we just do yeah. the maintenance part and the expansion doesn't happen, we can still feel yeah. like so the just, goal is. Just continue. so you know, I did bring that up at city council meeting, and there was not a very much positive reception for that. The, 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 for what? The, what I, the, expansion. what I got back is that it'll happen when the city expands there. So that's, that's sort of, I mean, I can push it harder and I'm, maybe I'll mention it again, but um, that seems to be like everybody's like, we don't want to do it because we can't patrol it because the problem is the city police. Oh, patrol. we are very well aware. Yeah. So yeah. I've yeah. heard lots of reasons. There's, but and, um, but what we need to do is, Gently but relentlessly continue the pressure. Yeah, I can and, and keep it keep it going. But but you know it's not going to happen right away. But mm -hmm. we can't let the vision die, and we just keep keep pushing. And 
you know, one of the problems of the city is having is policing. You know, what you could do is saying, you know, we need to maybe have a interagency agreement between the county sheriff and the city of uh, Academy pol Police. You, can, you got vandalism going down at the, at the cemetery, the city cemetery. Makes a whole lot of sense the city responds to that. And if you get that mutual agreement, uh, guess what? You could include the uh, the city owned property, which is the diverso property. Oh, I think there's I think there is a there's ways of getting around all that. And I've put it on my list of things to mention yeah. next time. Yeah. So I'm gonna mention it. But I but I, I'm just telling you that um, that there doesn't seem to be a good I, cheering and clapping when I mention yeah, it. I, I know well, that. Then well, I was trying to get you're, and, not, you're not surprising us. <laughs> and there is a um before you kind of dip your toe into that, I think it's important that you have a, a fuller grasp of um, what the existing, uh, oh gosh, I, I'm working, my mom's in hospice care and it's been pretty tough. She has, so anyway, I'm sleep deprived and everything. So. I'm not expressing myself very well, but before you go mentioning that and pushing for that, there's, I'd like to make sure that you know what has been proposed for, with the input of the property owners and um, where we're at on that, okay? So, you're talking about the Don't, development plan? What's that? You're talking about the development plan? It's not even, it's the development plan phase one, where you're basically just yes. making sure that you are being good neighbors and um, paving the road down to the gun club and doing things that can be helpful, neighborly, and, and secure for all the people there. So, you know, that's what's in place. And, um, you know, so that's the first step. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's clearly printed out. So I think that's important to be familiar with because, um, mm -hmm. anyway. Understood. Before you. My plan was just to say, yeah. traversal is still here. And then the yeah. force of discussion more than yeah, I have one of those things is I feel it's one of those things that you just got to bring it up every so often until somebody sure, but not that people forget. Oh, yeah, yeah there's yeah. a property that see houses and outside. And the other word to attack is, oh, there's a problem with policing in a couple areas, and that would be one because it's city owned, mm -hmm. and tackle that problem, not even go after the and expansion at that point. But, can I but say knock down some of the roadblocks? One of the elements of that phase one thing is to have an intergovernmental agreement for law enforcement. It's already there. The city council just needs to adopt that. So, you know, the we'll, tools I'll, are there. I'll write that down. So, yeah. and combine it with the cemetery property too. Yeah. Okay, so. And just some basic maintenance things that'll mm -hmm. be just good neighborly. And, um, you know, I, I think when you... Good idea. Yeah. So, okay, in fact, so if I push for that, logging road mm -hmm. maintenance. Just spend, just spend. I said, if that? I push for that without even pushing for the development, then... That's exactly. Then we can say we own the property, might as well be able to respond to it. And without even pushing that, then later yeah. on, that obstacle is, has been taken care of. Yes. Exactly. The next things. That's exactly. exactly. You, so I can, I'm, I'm just you, writing this down so I can remember it. That, that is spot on. And I think that's what people don't quite grasp that, you know, that's the first step is there for being, for the city to be good neighbors, you know. Um, okay, uh, so logging road and maintenance and expansion. I so risk. Okay, all right. And then um, third topic. I think we should get bike lanes in there someplace. 
So we do have our mm -hmm. TSP plan coming up. Our TSP should be on this. And if we're going to limit it, yeah. TSP is more important than the bike lanes. Well, it is. That's let's just let's, do, put let's TSP. do TSP. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A TSP update. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And great. Um. So, and we can kind of think about these and confirm them next time and run them by our fellow members. Yes. I was to say, Britt, I haven't heard anything from you for a little bit. Are you all on board with those three? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was just trying to move things along. And not yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but I hadn't heard from you, I thought. All right. And Bruce, go right ahead. Um, uh, update Clackamas County bike pad. Just any high points? And that, well, there is one high point, but basically the meeting was a lot about hot spots, which we I talked about last time. And so it was getting a letter together and, and acting on that. But they came up uh, on um, parking and bike lanes is going to be something we're, we're going to have a subcommittee and working on that. I volunteered to do that, uh, be on it. I don't know if you did, but uh, I volunteered to, to work on that. And, uh, uh, you know, nothing's worse than having, a, you know, a problem with a heavily used bike lane that people habitually park in. And in the county, it's on a uh, river road. Uh, uh, you, uh, you come out of Milwaukee and you go up the hill and there's always cars on it. That's been a big problem. And yeah, you know, is that so, worse than having a sidewalk put on a bar clean, bike clean? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it, it, because it's it's a busy road. Anyway, um, we're talking about that. Things we could do about it. Uh, they referred to uh, bike. Uh, uh, bike rider uprising website, which I looked at today and didn't yeah. have much in it. Uh, so anyway, we're going to be looking at that. And I keep thinking about, we have a problem with the bike lane on Ivy. And I brought it up before. And uh, it, it, it so it's um, North Ivy, North, South Ivy, South Ivy, South by Ivy. The uh, and by the river, kind of. No, it, it's uh, Malala, well not Malala, Pudding River Chocolates had their oh, business. Oh, yes, yeah. And they always have two, they don't park in their driveway. They allow that for customers. Ooh. And oh, so they always have. Oh, the owners are parked there? They're always the same cars. Oh. And I've complained, I've even complained to the, the police about it. And nothing's ever been done. And I, I'm going to say, I'd like to see something done here. And, you know, when we get into pedestrians, I would say, next month and fight the, 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 the chief of police in and talk about why this one spot is not enforced, the bike lane. They always park there. May and I clarify, though, that this is not just a random bike lane. It is the main north, south, uh, uh, even county, not just city, uh, uh, advised pathway for bikes. So where is this again? So where it's on this? Ivy Street. It's... Um, What's Red Cross from Hope Village. No, no, it's further, kind of further, further in. Um, that whole. It's just like Thirteenth and Ivy, or yeah, no, farther out. South of there, I believe. Yes. Here's how we do it. On the address for putting it, chocolate. It's in the city, right? No. Yes, it is. Yes. Here's the address. But it's 17th. on a county road. But it's 17th. within the city, so it can be enforced. It should yeah. be. It and like it's also a county. Road. It's also a county road, and I've also talked about it on the county level before. So that is a hot button for me um, from the county. Maybe <laughs> try to uh, code enforcement might work, or does the city code may need to be updated? I'll I'll mention maybe I'll mention that at city council, but the um, I think it's almost something that you need to have agreement with you know no, there's no it's it's simple you got a six inch line that makes it a bike oh, lane yeah and and you know the exceptions are emergency vehicles um delivery trucks you know the lots are very specific for the exceptions that's not no. what it is oh i know and, i'm saying but but to enforce something you need to get yeah with, uh, and either code enforcement or the chief wonderful well, about enforcing 
is um, on Redwood coming off of 99E, um, they keep that clear next to the apartments, which is huge because people come flying through there. And if you're driven into the bike lane, or I mean, into the traffic lane as a mm -hmm. cyclist, it's a blind corner. So anyway, this is one of our main arterials mm -hmm. and it's, it's a significant area, but we have not had the same uh, enforcement which is unfortunate because they do a great job over But I think if we brought the chief event. in and we talk about maybe some of these accidents we've had, and we talk specifically about that point, okay. because it is really dangerous for a cyclist to be forced into a, a lane of, it's like, you know, quite a bit of traffic on ID in South ID, and it's moving. Good. So what's, so put, where's the Pudding River? I don't want to mention Pudding River by name because- No, you don't. No. I think that's going okay, to be- here's, here's 13th, here's 15th, here's Hope Village, here's Pudding River. So I say between 13th and 15th? Yeah. Yeah. That's, we'll just put it that way. Now, on the east side, right? East side. I'll just say between 13th and 15th that way. It's not specific to any particular person who. Yeah, it's just that we have repeat. Yeah, if they can start enforcing it in that area, it would sure be oh, a even, lot you know, safer. Even if the first time they gave them a warning. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not. We're not there to. But the, when they don't respond, yeah. then you can. Yeah, the, the warning. Yeah. Start with a warning and, and then yeah. respond if it's uh, parking the bike lane. Um, now, like I say, I'm going to re report these to the city council, see what happens. Um, and, and it's also, you know, uh, feeds right into the school. So there's kids riding their bikes to school and things like that. So, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so moving on, staff and council updates. Anything bike head related that we um, should? I have a couple things. Um, it kind of fell off our radar, and so I just want to check that we've kind of decided to forego um, po posting in the newspaper about the vacancy that we have. Oh, oh. no, can we? Yes, um, we just need to decide what we want to say and like how long we want it in the newspaper for. And we should have it in Spanish too. Well, good why idea. don't somebody keep saying somebody and then it's going to come back to me, but um, <laughs> talk to Miguel um, Cholula, who is the uh, Bridging Cultures. I had to sit down with him where I encouraged them to, to, to get people from that community onto the committees because I think they should have better representation. representation. So I'm wondering if somebody could contact he's the he's the director of bridging cultures his name is Miguel Cholula and he um had a nice um sit down meeting with him a little bit <coughs> work wise right now I'm very busy so it's kind of hard for me to do lots of things myself I barely can go to these meetings and the you know but the um but I, I think it would be good to, to sit down and say hey can one of you somebody join the committee um and we need some representation and since i think a lot of that hispanic community is on bikes at least that's what i notice and pedestrians a lot of pedestrians and it would be good to have their imp to say like that which is true we want their input and we want to be able to uh you know as we because i know a lot of them don't have um reliable transportation i work with a lot of myself mm -hmm. I, i'm fluent in spanish so i'm pretty I, I do talk to a lot of people in that community, but it's hard for it's hard for me to do a recruiting drive. Just um, yeah. while I'm doing their taxes, can you be on the committee, yeah. and, and I don't keep track of which committees are open or, or not. So I, I understand this, I guess. But I think I think that would be something oh. that you could probably get some some results. Yeah, there. and we have tried in the past without a lot of success, but I think we should keep trying. Keep trying because well, yeah, contact yeah, contact Miguel. Yeah, I think I think he would he would um, for sure. He, he might be able to find somebody. Well, 
I've got my to-do list here. Okay. I think some people may be intimidated by the process or something and think that we're scarier than we really are. What's really intimidating now for somebody who's not super computer savvy is now they want everything online and it looks like a job application that you have to do. In fact, when I got to the city council mm -hmm. thing, I'm like, I don't know what to put on there. So I just fill it out like in two seconds each line, what I've, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know why they chose me, but anyway, yeah. um, but it wasn't because of what I put on that application. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. And uh, but I, I do. So, think yeah, I have a few more things. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. So I know we spent a little bit of time tonight. So maybe this crash data. Um, do folks want to take it home, and then maybe we could kind of discuss it in more depth at our next meeting? How does that sound? Well, no. Like we said earlier, I'd like to see the state, uh, chief of police come to the meeting, and invite yeah. him, and okay. then talk about this with him. I think that would be great, and I have a thing out that I will invite him to. Are you going to put these on a map? I, I can certainly put them on a map by the next meeting. So I'm looking at them. I'm sure. usually on the map where every one of them is, but nice to look for clusters. I um, I had that for thought, sure. but I just got it. And how close to schools and the times, you know, it'd be nice to even put them, like, if it's a morning it's a yellow dot and at night it's a well, late I'm night not that early there's very relatively few morning mornings most of them are afternoon yeah. Yeah. most of them are later aren't they mm -hmm. one was at midnight you know what they're all later no, they're not. There's one at 8, 8, oh, 46 one? in the morning. No, no, they're, they're here 11, so 11 is the midday, you know, 11 in the morning. And 12, 21, you're right. Yeah, but the don't. majority of them are no. later, and I wonder if they, if that kind of can respond as well. I think you're going to have a later mm -hmm. because people coming home from travel. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. rush hour. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what's rush hour, what's evening, what's weekend, what's not? But what it means me is I've seen county data, uh, and this is a lot more than I ever expected. Yeah. No, well, it's not good. We have it's, to think. Oh, well. I know. Well, I'm I glad know. the data. 21 is, uh, pedestrian injuries. Oh, in you're saying you're not saying the data is more comprehensive. You're saying there's more numbers of incidents. Well, the data is more. Comp this is better information. More, a lot more than I ever expected. Mm -hmm. I Me thought that's too. what you were. Sorry, that's what I was responding to. No, too. that I was remember. Katie at the police station put it together. So thankfully, she was able to help yeah. us out and take a good chunk of time to do this. So, Mindy, you you said you'll reach out to the chief and yeah. Okay, so you have that handled. Um, yep. And then one last thing that I would like us to discuss is that um, the. Emerald necklace portion or the Marks Place portion of the Emerald Necklace Trail has a pre-application meeting coming up. And so our pre-op is kind of the the first meeting with developers um, to kind of, you know, take a preliminary look at their preliminary plans and discuss what the city needs, what they want to do. So obviously Marks Place has been developed, but they're kind of doing a pre-op just for this section. Um, this is a conceptual plan, but this is kind of the best of what I have right now. And, and so I wanted to show this to you all and see if you kind of had any. So that's called Mark's place. This subdivision is, Mar sorry, yes. And, yeah, so. and, and I'm, I'm trying to grasp where this is. Yeah. So this is off I Ivy mean, and 16th. So this is the um, the farms on the ridge above the river. Yeah. Oh, okay, got it. It's to the, um, it's to the, east yep. of ivy and so it kind of the first section comes like this and then it comes all the way down here basically kind of redwood continues all the way down and then um, the the trail will kind of stop this is actually called maple now i believe or maybe this and so pretty much that lower green section is the um kind of the hillside down to the river you can see the river in the very bottom mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. so you're kind of on yeah, the ridge is, along there this is just the tax lot boundary but mm -hmm. yeah so you're not allowed to so the emerald necklace expects to continue 
Correct. Mm -hmm. But this is the, so, so as we discussed this earlier, this it. is what they own. And so this is what they've are required to develop. Yes. The, they don't own this well, parcel here all the way to Ivy. It's kind of wonky first, that it, um, it, it juts out like this. So it looks not, like an orphan. Yeah. Yeah, so there will be, it'll stop and it won't go all the way to Ivy. But once it gets to mm -hmm. Ivy, there's a lot that needs to be done there. Yeah. Um, and, but that's a conversation for. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that when you apply for grants, they're not going to give you a grant that connects to nowhere is what they always say. Right. So, you know, even if it's a mm -hmm. bit of an orphan now, but we know it's part of the Emerald Necklace and, you know, we can, you know, what. Well, and is, is this is not the first piece of the emerald necklace to be it's developed? No. Oh, it's not. Okay, I thought this was. No, no. the logging roads really. The oh, first piece. I was thinking it goes on. That's our around. whole east but, side. But but aside from the logging road section, this is the first piece separate Where from that north south, south connection. That's part of the emerald necklace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. No. On the other side of Ivy, that development is part of the emerald necklace. Oh, yes. um, Dodds, not Dodds, that's wrong. I don't know what it's called. Ivy Ridge. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Um, so I know this is, you know, very high level, but do you all, all have any comments, thoughts that you would like me to share with um, Ryan Potter is the one. Well, who... uh, what I would suggest is, you know, they got two entrances and exits to this. Correct. Why don't they have instead of one uh, between 111 and 112, slide all the houses down a little bit and make it down yeah. like it's, key it's one too, It's too late for that. Yeah. So, so this is where the trail is. Well, you asked for input. Sorry, I know. Sorry. So, so they already started developing. So, so this is kind of these tracks. We call them tracks, basically non-developable parcels that are reserved for yeah. access. Access and ped, yeah, bike ped access are here. So within this kind of knowing that they have to use these. Is there actually a spruce, and, spruce street between Pine and Redwood? Um, okay, this was a very early phase, so I don't know what the what the road names are now. What I don't know here is, will that be what we've run into in the past is that they don't make a curb cut um, where that joins up with the road. And that's huge for ADA access. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that happens. So you're saying where the trail meets the road, you yep. want a curb cut? Yes. Okay. For sure. Otherwise, you're not going to have people walking clear down to the far end. And yeah, that's really important. Is that right? And so um, we've got that big gray area with the graphics, but does this, it go? This is no, this, they don't own this parcel or they have, not they don't, or okay. they haven't developed this parcel. It's okay. not part of the application. Okay. Or the and then season. what happens further to the, is this the edge of it right it's, there? Yeah. Okay. So everything Thank is kind you. of blurred out or kind of you know, shaded it. over. Okay. This is the subdivision and the parcels gotcha. that they're using for the subdivision. At this phase, they could, mm -hmm. you know, purchase. Could they? How come they? Shouldn't they extend it past ninety eight and ninety? No, to the far right. To the far right. There. That's a good question. Yeah. I know it's a little bit of a road to nowhere, but eventually. With this, I mean, it dead ends on on the on the west side. Yeah, just right. Why doesn't it dead end on the east side? It's a good end. Yeah. I will add that to the notes. Okay. Any other comments? My comment on that, I'm just thinking, is on that, if people want to go walk and visit on the trail, they might need to park along that street to get into the there. And so I'm just, my observation is, is that going to clog up that street? But it's probably not for now going to be a long enough trail to attract yeah. people. I'm just that outsiders. Was, yeah. That is a good point, though. I think in the long run, maybe we need to think about, you know, um, I can't think of the name. Where's the park on the logging road Timber that's kind park. of within the subdivision? And there's not really parking for that, is there? There's the yeah, Eagle Park correct. where they can do it. 
It'll be eco friendly. But you know, so so similar to you know, is there somewhere where we can designate land similar to yeah, to eco park, like to park, park to access? The, yeah, yeah, like a trailhead was, access. It's on the ivy portion down there. <laughs> yeah, with this whole thing could be a parking lot. I love that. <laughs> um, okay. But that is a good. Um. Yeah. Anything okay. else? No, not unless you guys have any more comments that you want me to, to relay. On this, because she's no, no. I'm going. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I'm waiting for her to finish. Okay. okay. That was all I had. Great. And then, yeah. Go ahead, Bruce. The other item, the new item, I forgot uh -huh. was. I saw this in. Uh, uh, DC. Yeah, pa Paplin. Pa Paplin uh, mm -hmm. newsletter that uh, Metro has purchased 109 acres. Uh, I would know it as the uh, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Well, by, down by Knights by Bridge, and, and 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 then the road at night makes the turn. Yeah. Art roll or whatever. Yeah, and then becomes art, art. But in that area, that's 100, 109 acres. That falls just short of connecting up to the Mall State Park and all along the Pudding River there. And that is, uh, I think, really big news. Um, wow. That's, that's uh, why the coffee so shop. So is that where and I believe Post Awaits? Post Awaits. Yeah. 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 Well, put it this way. I so didn't see the, the name, okay. but that is. Well, okay. Coastal Waits own. Is, I don't it, mean, is it farmland know? now, most of that? What's that? Is it mostly farmland right now? Okay, we're being recorded, right? Correct. So I'm going to simply okay. say Coastal Waits and it's farmland. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's also a floodplain. Yeah. Oh, I see. So it's a mm -hmm. floodplain. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So, wow. What's, what's okay. uh, Metro's intentions? Don't, uh, it's kind of a wild area. If I can conservation land. When they do things like that, they usually put in some walking trails and stuff like that. So I think that's why I brought it up. I thought it was kind of interesting. It's not in our jurisdiction, but well, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it speaks to connectivity. Well, uh, for walking, hiking, biking. Yeah, they're referring to it as the Malala Oaks Prairies and Floodplain. Oh. So maybe it'll be like a bird sanctuary. Could be. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's going to be so a happy to the airport that's out there. You know, it's, I always see it out there. <laughs> Sorry? What? It's close to the airport. Is it too close to the airport to be a sanctuary for birds? No. The birds near the airport need a sanctuary because <laughs> they're <laughs> 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 they do. No. You're, that's you're, you're, just right. <laughs> I guess I'm usually speeding over there, so yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> All right. Well, Malala Oaks Prairie and uh, floodplain. And floodplain. And they're also working with indigenous communities, too, because apparently they, they were in that area. Okay. So, and Canby is not a part of Metro, but they are this kind of green space along the Willamette is part included in Metro. So, and, and they kind of more have the idea of. So you got the Ball land. State Park with the ball coming down and you got the pudding coming into it and they own a little bit. Uh, the park goes up into the end of the pudding a ways. There's a gap between that and the post weights property. Oh, yeah. So there isn't, it isn't a, a, all it's connected, but it's, but it's close. Pretty close. Um, I have a picture. And they're talking about the mark, uh, the bridge. Uh, it, it's interesting. There. Okay. I'll just pass that around and you can mm -hmm. see the map. And while we're doing that, if we can talk about our next meeting, probably April 9th, and Mike would be the ticket, I mean ticket, minute taker, and all right. Um, what? 
So is that a Metro buying a property outside Metro or is that? No, it is metro. in Metro. I assume it's inside it's Metro. It's in Metro. Okay. So They're close. <laughs> yeah. They've kind of, when they established Metro lines, they kind of kept the floodplain along the Willamette River as the border. So Canby's not part of Metro. But the their tax returns for oh, people. Oh yes, I know. <laughs> I know you know, but I'm just saying. But, but what people don't recognize is that that floodplain there is part of it. So anyway, okay. And um, at 7:45, if we want to, there's nothing further. I'll take a movement move, uh, motion to adjourn. Your turn. I'll take, I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Second. Uh, discussion, all in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Meeting adjourned. Thank you for your time.